Hello, my name is Jody Ann Johnson, the CEO of Miami's Action Coach business coaching firm, Team Sage, and your host for Business Spotlight Miami, where we focus on the business owners that make South Florida great. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Oliver Bellin, CEO of Calcolum. He's a supply chain finance specialist whose company has reinvented the way companies analyze, manage, and negotiate better payment terms. Welcome, Oliver. Can you give us a brief description of your business and what makes it unique in this specific niche? Yeah, sure. Sure. And thank you, Jody, for being part of this uh, great session. So, yes. So our company, Calculum, which is a Miami-based fintech company, to explain it very simple, we do one thing and we do it very good, is we help companies analyze, optimize, and negotiate better payment terms with their trading partners. So- With their credit partners, is that what you said? Yes, with their trading partners, like, like suppliers. So- okay. So, you know, maybe some people in the audience, they, they never heard or they don't know exactly what payment terms means. But so basically, I will explain payment terms is part of every negotiation between uh, a seller and a buyer, right? So every time when they negotiate and they trade goods and services, they always discuss mainly four things. They always discuss the amount or the volume of goods and services they are buying or selling, the quality, the pricing. And the last point they always discuss is, when do you pay me or when should I pay you? <laughs> this is the payment terms, correct? Right, right. And obviously you can, you can imagine if you um, collect your money faster or if you hold longer to your money to pay your supplier it has a huge impact on your cash flow, but Absolutely. also on your counterparty. And this is what we are focusing. So we are helping organization determine what should be the right length of these payment terms. So what sort of size company would you work with? Yeah, Cause that's not necessarily something that you do with, with a small, small business, but like what's a typical client of yours? Can you give us some examples? Yes. Yeah, so we tend to work with very, very large like Fortune 500 companies, uh -huh. like Roche Pharmaceuticals. And, but we would like, and we are focusing now moving forward to more mid-market companies. So still 1 billion, around 1 billion in annual sales. But um, we have also companies where we go as small as 50 million annual revenue. Okay. Because... And the thing is, because it's a universal problem and everybody understands it. I have to, I have to improve my liquidity. I have to collect my money faster or I want, I don't want to be the party which pays my suppliers earlier than everybody else, correct? Right. So everybody's looking for ways to, to have this information and to negotiate these terms with their trading partners. And how do you get paid? Very simple, we have um, a web-based platform, which is leveraging AI and um, it's called a a ADA. And um, we sell our platform, our services via subscription. So basically our clients, they um, pay an annual fee and they have access to the platform and they can analyze mostly 10,000, 50,000 suppliers, all their suppliers worldwide oh my goodness. and have information. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> right. yeah, How look, have you had your business? Fun, but it's a lot of, sorry? I was asking, how long have you had your business? We started in 2020. Um, the first years were maybe mainly preparing. We were in stealth mode. Um, preparing all the calculations, testing all the calculation and results, fine tuning the platform. And then um, we launched and uh, went into production with our platform in January, 2021. So in the pandemic, did that affect Correct. your business yes. very much? Sorry? 
did the pandemic affect your business like opportunity or challenge wise like how was the impact of that no i mean no uh the only thing what we see right now again unlocking working capital generating free cash flow it's always a focus of every organization but especially now since the or coming out of the pandemic where governments increase the interest rates has a big impact on the focus because now borrowing money to increase your liquidity has a much higher price tag yeah. so now organizations are looking ways to generate free cash flow what we provide by just aligning your terms to the market very nice why did you start your business we saw that there's a, a real need there for more transparency so i worked since about 18 17 18 years in helping organizations to optimize their working capital um Calculum is actually my second company the first company was called swiss commercial capital which i founded also during a uh a strange period was 2007 during the last <laughs> and uh yeah we sold the business to macquarie bank the fourth largest bank in in australia and this business was working with financial institution to inject liquidity into the marketplace basically to fund finance companies um by financing their receivables and payables mm -hmm. but if you are in the financing business and you're working with banks, you always limit yourself because you always have to um, focus on organizations which fits the focus of the banks, mainly by jurisdiction. So, you know, if you would work with a, a regional bank here in the US and you have a client which needs funding in Vietnamese Dong, then it would be very difficult to find, right? So it's the currency the um, the country sometimes the industry and then very much the credit risk so the large banks they only want to have the investment grade the, the, the lowest risk right and it's kind of it makes it a little bit boring because everybody's just jumping at the same companies and and trying to sell them these services and, and then I, I just saw that obviously this is a universal problem to solve and by kind of just offering data insights to companies we can provide already huge benefits in improving their working capital and free cash flow but we are not limited to any any yeah any, any focus of the bank so we can go after companies any anywhere in the world any size as i mentioned before any credit risk we can even go after companies which are chapter 11 Mm. Wow. And uh, and if you still want to simulate what would be the effect with a financial institution injecting liquidity, we, the, the platform can still simulate that. So it's it's not just without financing; you can add financing to the mix and then see what is the benefit to your payment terms. Wow, really fascinating. You no, know, Simon Sinek says people don't care what you do or how you do it. They care why you do it. So why do you do what you do? What is it about it that matters to you personally, Oliver? Yes. Yeah, so for me personally, it's it's just there's there's no today there's no reference to payment terms. Nobody knows what should be the right terms. If you ask. If you ask companies today, large and small, how they determine why they are paying somebody on day 30, right? Why? You always get uh, three answers. The, the first ones, they just say, I'm just paying what I'm used to. The last 10 years, I paid my suppliers on day 30. That's probably the right. The other one says, very similar, they say, look, I just got an invoice from my supplier to pay them on day 50, I just pay them on day 50. But I have no clue about, is this supplier offering 60 days to my competitors? I don't know. Uh -huh. right? 
the uh, companies which we deal with, as I mentioned, quite large organizations, quite sophisticated ones, they all use Excel to try to analyze thousands of their suppliers. Are you kidding? Yeah, you know, everybody. <laughs> yeah. And 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 again, they only have their their view about them versus their suppliers, but they 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 don't have the outside view what other competitors are offering. And then the most sophisticated, I mean, sophisticated, the ones which have big pockets, they sometimes tend to work with the large uh, advisory companies, the brand names. I'm not saying the names not right now, but, and, uh, and surprisingly, we speak to all of them. And they, these advisory companies also use Excel. So to make it simple, why? Because today there's really no database. There's no reference which tells you what should be the right terms. And we saw, it, or we still think that there's a, a huge need for that to, to create a reference to, to increase transparency in the market uh, in terms of payment terms. Really fascinating, Oliver, super fascinating. What would you say is the biggest business challenge today, in your opinion? For us or in general? I would say both. So like in general, and then for your company. So I would say right now, and I mean, there's many, many big challenges, but right now, specifically um, what is going on with AI and we are leveraging AI is for organization to understand the implications and the challenges, but also opportunities. So it's always, it's always both sides, correct? Right. But for this, you really need to know what's going on. And I think a lot of organization, they don't grasp the, the, um, the changes which are coming very, very, very quickly. Right. And, um, and AI is one thing, but the other thing is AI is just a mechanism, but it's fed by data. So how important data is. And um, yeah, these, these I think are some challenges or opportunities for organization. And they have to be uh, conscious about that because it will change every aspect. And we are just focusing on one thing, but it's a very important thing is, is payment terms. Yeah. Well, I know um, that you talk about the power of one, and that whole concept of 1% or one day earlier or one day later and like the impact that that can have. So it's a very, very important conversation, regardless of the size of your business, because it can make such a huge impact. And um, so it, it's, it's really important. But something came to my mind when you were talking about how AI is dependent on data. How do you, how do you ensure that your data is, is, is accurate and pristine? Yeah, so first of all, when you speak about data, you have to understand there's different, obviously different types of data. There is um, data which is kind of in the public space and then there's very specific data. So we are fortunate. We receive a lot of data from our clients and prospects, which oh, is okay. unique. Okay. So we, rec we receive data in terms of who is buying from whom, what are they buying? So the type of commodity or services, how much are they buying in which currency and when are they buying, when, when they, are, they are paying. This is information, it's in every organization's ERP system. It's, you cannot buy it, there's no database for that. So it's why we are the first database in the market offering that. Um, and obviously all the data which we receive is anonymized and kept uh, confidential. So we are not, for example, if we would have, which is not our client, but if we would have Toyota as an example, we would not go to, uh, to Nissan and say, hey, these are their payment <laughs> terms with these suppliers. Obviously we're not doing that. Um, but we using characteristics of uh, companies to identify similar organization and then 
tell our clients what, what, what should be the right payment terms when dealing with these suppliers. Um, yeah, so that is one part. And then the other part is um, once we have a company in our database, then we enhance it with a lot of additional information like financial information, credit scoring, credit ratings, industry information, information on commodities, a lot. And then this gives you then the big picture because payment terms alone is one thing, but you need to know what are the factors which play a role for you to influence payment. Terms. For example, if I would be your supplier, uh, Jody, and, and uh, I know, or you know, you know that my business, my annual sales revenue represents no, sorry, that your spend with me represents about 20% of my annual annual revenue. So you're a big client of me. Obviously, then I would be much more accepting what you offer to me in terms of payment terms than if it would be the reverse. So these are some aspects. And for that, we need to know the annual revenue, other financial data, which we get from external sources. So do you... you obviously, yes. Sorry, I interrupted you. That's I apologize. Right. No, so basically what I'm saying is the key aspect of our business is that we, we have access to very specific data, which is not publicly available, impossible. You have to collect it. And the second is to enhance it to third party providers. And the third one is to make the connection. So basically data alone, is kind of useless, but how you connect the dots, how you then create insights and making connections, um, which then you can make powerful uh, decisions out of that. So what I was going to ask you was, you have all this data that's super valuable for business and business owner and, and their you know, procurement officers or whatever, and the um, finance team. Uh, do you also offer services like you'd help them to think through how to ask for different payment terms? Yes, yeah, cool question. Yeah, so what we 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 provide a, not just payment terms, we provide a lot of additional information to again improve the information and, 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 and data insights on trading partners, right? Because data and information is, is powerful. Now, uh, one thing is, yeah, if our platform says like, hey, Jody, you should move your terms to by 12 days, right? And if I'm, again, your supplier and tell me, hey, Oliver, we, are moving, we would like to move our terms by 12 days. And to your previous point, the question would be like, why? Why are you moving? And, uh, and so the platform provides all the argumentation, so all the reasoning, specifically on the buyer and supplier um, relationship and characteristics of the supplier. So this can be, if it finds out leverage, this can be one. Or it could be uh, the country, the industry, the commodity, or or maybe you're buying from another organization like mine as a supplier, but we, we belong to the same parent. Then you can say, hey, Oliver, I, the other sister companies, which is also selling goods to us, has these payment terms. We just want to harmonize it. It doesn't make sense to have two different payments. So there's a lot of argumentation and the system creates a script, nice. which goes step by step, telling, telling the procurement people, because these are the, the personas which are picking up the phone and, and, and negotiating, as I said before, in terms of pricing, volume, quality, and also payment terms, at least once a year, they're having this, this discussion. And the script then tell, provides a script telling you step-by-step step what you should say to um, be much more successful in your negotiations. Is this mainly like product-based or do, do you like, like industry, so somewhat industry-specific work that you're doing and then broadening out? You know, because I, I could see, you know, I have a client that does produce and they do negotiations once a year because they're, you know, they sell quite a bit of produce, like a large, large volume of produce. And 
I could see where this would be meaningful to them on some level, but maybe you're only looking at like hard uh, materials or something like that, or do you do services too? Yeah, so in the world of spend, the different ways how to categorize. So I would say the first one is direct spend, which goes all the goods and services, which goes in your production of your main product, correct? Which you are okay. then, like for example, if you are going back to a Toyota, when you are um, not a car manufacturer, then it's maybe steel, um, like colors for the painting and all the, all the stuff which is directly connected to your manufacturing. And then there's indirect spend. So that, that could be the coffee in your office for your employees and stuff like that, or cleaning the office, which is not directly connected to your manufacturing. Right. We analyze both, the oh. direct and indirect spend. Yeah. Um, then there is the strategic ones, like no, it's always like the 80-20 rule. And then there's the tail suppliers. So these are all the small suppliers which play an important role, but in terms of dollar amount, it's small. And in the market, these advisory consultancy companies, they tend to just analyze the top, let's say 100 suppliers. We analyze 10,000, even in some cases, 80, 100,000 suppliers. Um, yeah, so to answer the question, Every every uh, relationship, every analysis of every supplier counts for us and, and plays a role. And um, we we have no specific industry focus because anything which is manufactured mostly needs logistics, correct? To move goods and stuff. Then you have packaging, it's always required uh, marketing. But there's, we always see similar services and similar um, solutions and similar, similar suppliers. But then, yeah, interesting, for example, in, uh, we analyze a lot in, in pharma. And now what is interesting, we analyze now the suppliers of the suppliers. So the, the, you know, the suppliers, now the big ones are like, hey, I also want to analyze mine. And then you see the whole picture. Right, wow. That's, it's very fascinating. <laughs> you must be having quite a good time with that. And so Definitely. what's inspiring you the most about your business right now? So first of all, it's, it's great to create something new and um, yeah, with a vision and then, and then um, seeing su some success and, and seeing happy clients where you can change the business and improve it. But then on the larger pictures, yes, it's, it's really trying to, to change something in the market, which so, so far nobody has done. So really, um, um, and, and using new technologies to, to make it happen. So um, there's different aspects, but yeah. So coming up with a vision and then making it happen uh, with a productive system, having clients, um, Believing in you and trusting you, so giving that they give you the data, and then giving them all the insights and opportunities to to make a positive impact on their business. So that this excites me. Yeah, that. Thank you so much for your time. You know, and the difference that you're making, both for your clients and for our community, and for making the world a little bit more transparent. Right. Um, not necessarily to have somebody win and somebody lose, but to create some equity um, in the relationship. Exactly. And um, can you share with our audience a little bit um, about how they can find out about your services? Sure. So um, obviously our website, www.halcolum.ai okay. is our website. But um, AI, got AI. Exactly, exactly. exactly. And um, I forgot to mention, but um, obviously this session, uh, it's great because when you hear it, it sounds obviously like, yeah, why should I not I look at it and improve my terms? But a lot of things have to 
been done in terms of education awareness because people again it's a totally new new solution people are like oh i never heard that i can have insights on what should be the right payment terms or that i can improve it so um we welcome anybody which is interested to to have this discussion and normally how we start um, a discussion with somebody which is interested is very simple we just need seven data points so we just need to know who is the buyer who is the supplier again how much you're buying the, the currency the actual payment terms then um, we sign a mutual nda and then any company can test us and they receive the results in just a few days depending it's a business thousand or five thousand suppliers but they can see then on the platform how much has been identified in terms of opportunities to improve and then they can make a decision if to move forward if this is something of interest or not and we oh, had sometimes yeah. example where companies said like hey i'm already the, the platform shows that you are already top of your of your game in, in terms of your industry and some others face huge opportunities to to be aligned with the market. That's really um, so, super generous as you're educating people. And, you know, just working with business owners myself, I can tell you that many of them don't understand the power of one and the power of actually having, you know, an extra couple of days of holding on to their money and, you know, what, what it translates to. So does the platform actually tell them if they improve their payment terms by some you know percent or some number of days, what that would translate to in terms of dollars? Yeah, hundred percent. Yes, that's nice. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it tells you. So normally, when we let's say if we start a discussion with um, a company which is interested, we receive the data again. Let's say if it's thousands of suppliers in a few days, we invite them to a video call such as this now, and then we show them the results on a portfolio level. And it tells you like, you have, um, I don't know, X amount, X million dollars of cash flow opportunity, which is just there by having not the right terms um, applied to your suppliers. And usually on average, it always depends on the company, but say we identify about eight to 12% free cash flow for every dollar spend we analyzed. So a company which has 100 million in spend, which we analyze, we identify between, let's say, 10 and 20 million free cash flow. Crazy. <laughs> yes. Now, will you ever come down to smaller businesses? Is there an intention to get down to the smaller yes, businesses? Yes, no. This is our goal. Um, and the good news is we, the, because the, our platform is automated, so we can, and it's again, data and, and calculations also, so we, 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 we don't have this huge amount of expenses and costs, like for example, um, consultancy. So, uh, and our goal is to go to businesses 50 million, maybe even smaller in annual sales. Very nice. Well, as I said, Oliver, thank you so much for the difference you're making for business owners. And, you know, and, and then subsequently that expands out, right, to their families and their employees and our, our exactly. economy and our world, exactly. right? And so it's C A L C U L U M dot A I, Calculum dot A I. Calculum, yes. Oliver, yes. thank yes. you for your time. It's been thank you, Judith. really thank interesting you. and a pleasure to have had this interview with you today. Right. So that's Business Spotlight Miami interviewing the business owners that make South Florida great. Perfect. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jody.